Today is a look at one of my favorite apps. Don't mind this blank screen. There's actually stuff happening in here. Honestly, this is my first look because I want you guys to experience it as I would experience it for you experiencing it for your first time. Maybe that was unnecessary and redundant. Doesn't matter. that aren't familiar, my name is Shane Farmer, this is Dark Horse Rowing, and here we teach you everything that you need to know about rowing, as well as the indoor rowing machine specifically, so that you can perform better and or coach better on that machine. Today we are taking a look at an app that I have downloaded once before, but I can't say that I know a whole lot about it. That is Live Rowing. Live Rowing has been around for some time. I know that they have partnered with many in the indoor rowing industry. We're going to start from scratch and we're going to see what happens. So first off, I just need to go to the app store and I'm going to download uh, the live rowing app. Once you get in, you're going to ask to log in. Go ahead and do that. Once you are inside, you're going to come to what it looks like is a dashboard. Now, my first time here, what I'm seeing are, so this is keeping track of, I guess, the metrics that I've done in this workout. Man, the last time I used this was like three years ago. So I guess this is still holding my data from like way back when. But next we've got, okay, so there's like a scroll bar on top where we have featured workouts, uh, shared workouts, workouts shared to me, that is like friends can share a workout with me. My custom aired to me, don't know what that means. Uh, my custom, so I can, I guess, program custom workouts here and Challenges my custom. Don't know what that is either. Challenges received, featured workouts, back to the beginning. Okay, so then I've got challenges. So they're just join a challenge. So everything is basically like rows and then each row has like a little swipe feature. And then I have like a quick start. So I can just, oh, this is interesting. All right, so I can, uh, I can just tap up here and it's going to add to the number of meters, I guess, that I can row. Oh, so if I swipe, swipe to the other side, that gives me a quick start, uh, if I go, then I can hit just row as well, and it basically just starts recording from what I gather so far. I go into community workouts, there are all sorts of community workouts loaded in here, I guess just ready for me to do. So that's cool, I can just click one, I assume it then um, propagates it to my, to my monitor, and that's the thing that kind of made live rowing stand out when they first came out. Uh, is that it takes over the monitor and it will push a workout to your monitor, program it for you, and that's a nice feature. If I go into the menu, on my left hand side I've got dashboard profile, join a challenge, featured workouts, community workouts, my workouts, build custom, history, join affiliation, metrics, well wow, there are like more things here than I know what to select from. What we're gonna do is test this per what our usual test is, 1,000 meters on the machine, and then we'll test it on the ski erg and see if it connects there as well, and see if it does any work there. I mean, I know it's called live rowing, not live skiing, so they're the same monitor. Maybe they will work, maybe they won't. We'll test it, we'll see if we can break it. I guess, like if I'm looking through my metrics and rankings, it shows me that I am ranked 1,874th for my total workouts that I've done on here less impressive than I would have expected. Shows me my total meters road. Ooh, I'm 3,024th for that one. Although I guess that means I'm 3,024th of all of the people who have registered for live rowing, and I only have 16,000 meters that I've logged, 17,000 meters that I've logged. I think back in the day when they first started out, I created an account and I did a bunch of, like maybe a 10K and then two other workouts. No, no, apparently I've done 13 total workouts, that's what it tells me. I've rowed for one hour and seven minutes total on this app, and I am the 3,501th. <laughs> 3,501th person. 3,000, I don't know if you can see that. 3,501th. Apparently I have a competitive record. Somebody, I raised somebody and I lost. I go into rankings, I've got my rankings here. This is everybody from FM Rowing to Law Concept 2. Oh, Connor McGregor. I could race Conor McGregor. I wonder how I would do. Let's give this thing a try, see what happens, and we will get back with the results. Let's give this a go. So for my first time pairing the app to the machine here, I'm noticing that there's a fair amount of delay in the phone on the app once things get connected. I'm noticing that there are about 
30 second pauses, which it just takes a while for the app to really give me any kind of feedback. It's almost like an invisible pinwheel of death. Um, and being the rookie that I am, I just am still tapping the screen and that is certainly not helping the process um, because I thought that the phone had just frozen um, but really it just seems to be taking its time. I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that it's also it's acting as a third party between my phone and the monitor. I think that's probably the issue that's happening here. So I'm gonna row a thousand meters. That's our, our standard uh, distance that we use for testing the apps. So I'm just gonna use a quick start here, setting a thousand meters on my own. Now I would recommend getting the phone mount. Um, it's something that it's fairly inexpensive, easy to get a hold of. I would encourage you to have this for any of your apps with the rower. It just makes it much easier to see your phone and use. You put it right on top of the monitor. The only issue that I'm finding is that there's a problem with the mount hitting the lock button on the phone. So <laughs> it, uh, is, it can lock your phone when you're trying to see your app. So I've come up with a fix, which is just to offset the phone a bit and it takes it off of that lock button. I've heard of the lock button actually taking screenshots or uh, selfies while you're on the machine, but I haven't experienced that. I've just heard that that happens. Um, I'm gonna pass the option for stroke rate guidance. I'm not gonna set a pace boat. I'm just trying to set that thousand meters. Um, I'm gonna hit next, which takes me to proceed to workout and then it tells me to sit ready. So uh, I'm gonna strap in and sit ready for this workout and let's get going on the thousand meters. So uh, I just finished the workout. It was a thousand meters. I don't know what I was thinking. I came out hard and <laughs> I just went for it. That's not the purpose or the intent just gonna happen. Um, so I got done with the workout, and then the app proceeded to say that it was loading data, pinwheeled for maybe, I don't know, 25 seconds. Now it's asking me if I wanna recommend this workout to a friend. Thousand meters for time, not super exciting. Nah, I'd give you something more interesting. Um, so now it's giving me a breakdown summary so, I rode a thousand meters. Uh, my time was a 312.3, point one different from what I'm seeing on the monitor here. At 136.1 average, that's the same. My average stroke rate was 24, and I took 79 total strokes. Now, apparently, I have a thousand that I did at some point at a 306.6 because it was making me race myself the whole time. Um, and that pace was a 306 point, or time was a 306.6, a 133.3 pace, 31 rate. I took 98 total strokes in that last one. So if I scroll side to side, I guess it's giving me breakdowns 200 by 200. Interesting. Can we get live rowing to be live skiing. Let's find out. All right, we're gonna see if we can break this thing on the ski erg. Who knows if live rowing can be live skiing. All right, turning it on. My monitor is on. More options. Turn wireless on. Wireless is now on on my ski erg. Live rowing is now turned on. I've disconnected my rower. I'm scanning for Bluetooth devices. Connection successful. Okay, so we have a connection. Now, I love you guys, but I don't particularly, well, okay, fine. I'm gonna do a thousand meters. You talked me into it, you guys. You're good training partners. So, it still says 1K row on my monitor. Man, this whole like workout alone option makes me feel really bad about myself. Yeah, fine, I'm gonna work out alone. Show, no, I don't wanna see my personal best. And I'm gonna set an optional pace boat to 145, how's that? Okay, let's give it a try. Next. Still says 1K row. Sit ready. It looks like it works. 
Ha! Ah. So, when I selected automatically push the logbook, post-workout now, it's forwarded me to the Concept2 log logbook login screen. And now I have to try to remember my login details. What I'm looking for is to see if it pushes to the Concept2 logbook, which I feel like it should, but I'm not seeing right away. I'm just not seeing it anywhere in here that I could connect to the logbook. That should be a simple connection because erg data does it, and I'm pretty sure they use erg data as the base. I'm not seeing anywhere if this can connect to the Concept2 logbook. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't want to misspeak here, uh, but I'm not seeing a logbook functionality anywhere. Oh, here we go. Found it. Automatically upload to Concept2 logbook inside the profile. It's a little bit hidden, but it is here. All right, that's good. But I don't know where it's getting my logbook information from because I didn't log in, but it says automatically upload to Concept2 logbook. I'm gonna assume when I set it up that it asked me for my logbook info and maybe that's what's in there. Well, I can barely breathe, but that's how you get logged in. Ah. I did under 145, thank you. I got my workout summary. Now, unlike erg data, it's not recognizing that I skied. It's still just reading everything as row. And I would imagine, I don't know. Let me try and log into the logbook and see what it does pushing it to the logbook. It, it asked for approval for live rowing to take control of uh, my logbook, gave it approval, told me to go back to live rowing, went back to live rowing, and I seem to be, I think I broke the matrix. Going back and forth with a constant pinwheel of saying refreshing logbook and getting logbook user, just <laughs> flickering back and forth. I'm assuming that's my fault for clicking away, but uh-oh, unable to upload results. Uh-oh, unable to load results. Okay, I got that three times. My workout's not showing up. Either of those thousands, they aren't there. I'm assuming they worked, but that I just didn't, uh, maybe I screwed up the order or something. Okay, so what's my main evaluation of this? Let's say that, uh, number one, it's a pretty good, like, glorified uh, pace boat screen. It definitely makes a, a much prettier interface than erg data, that's for sure. Its main winning functionality that, that I am seeing so far is that when a workout is set, on the software, it will push to the monitor. And for that, I give it big thumbs up. That's a very useful, for us as coaches, that's a very useful functionality because it means that I can program a workout, you don't have to know how to use the monitor, and it automatically pushes the workout to your monitor, automatically tracks what you need. Now the only other thing I'm gonna check here, I can connect Apple Health, Strava, heart rate sensors, they make it prettier. That much I think they do. Purchase Live Rowing Connect, Live Rowing Store. Huh, let's see what the store does. So I can buy a cable, cradle, buy t-shirts, can buy rowers, heart rate monitors. It looks like it's uh, basically an Amazon. Uh, a few things you can buy direct from them. And that's all I really have to say about Live Rowing, so. I don't know, go give it a try yourself. Do a workout, see what you think. Let me know in the comments below. I said go try it. Why are you still here, sitting in my garage? Get out of here.